So in this video, we're going to talk about, uh, or we're going to take a deeper dive into the rate of a reaction. We're going to look at uh, trying to define the rate of a reaction with respect to the concentration of the reactant over the change in time, or the concentration of product over the change in time. So let's, let's try to first understand conceptually what rate is. So if you think about things from, rate is simply the speed of a reaction. Okay, and if you think about your physics classes, speed is defined as the change in distance over the change in time, right? So the change in distance over the change in time. If we assume distance is d and time is t, and the change, we're going to denote the change with a little delta symbol. And this becomes delta d over delta t. Okay? Change in distance over change in time. So we can apply that same logic to the rate of the reaction. But out here, we don't have distance. We're not measuring distance. We're measuring how much of the reactant is depleting over time or how much of the product is increasing over time. Okay? So therefore, we can define it in the same way, rate of the reaction is equal to the change in the reactant concentration over the change in time or the change in the product concentration over the change in time. Now, you see these little square brackets out here, so I'll just kind of side note that out here. These square brackets, whenever you see them, they're actually, they mean the concentration is expressed in molarity, okay? Those are always the molar concentrations, which is moles per liter, okay? Let's consider a reaction. So, let's say we have a reaction N2O5. This reaction is taking place in gas phase, which gives us 4NO2 plus oxygen, okay? And let's say we're trying to under, uh, understand the rate of this reaction. So we can write different expressions for the rate of this reaction based on what we just learned out here. So if we define the rate of the reaction with respect to oxygen, it would be rate is equal to the increase in oxygen, right? So it could be the change in the oxygen. So there you see the square brackets, the molarity of oxygen the change in the concentration expressed in moles per liter of oxygen over the change in time, okay? Now, we can also express this rate in terms of the NO2 and the N2O5, okay? Now, before we do that, before we do that, let's try to understand what is this rate. So we want to define that a little bit more. So this rate is really the rate of formation of oxygen, right? Because oxygen is a product. So we're going to, let's go ahead and erase this and write it out. I'll specify that as the rate of formation of oxygen. Now, at the same time, let's try to figure out what is the rate of formation, uh, sorry, of decomposition of N2O5, which is another reactant, rate of decomposition of N2O5. So if you write that rate of decomposition of N2O5 is equal to the change in the N2O5 over the change in time. Now, since N2O5 is, is uh, reducing over time because it's a reactant, we, use, we have to add a negative sign out here, which denotes that it is going down, okay? It's reducing over time. So remember, when you, whenever you're expressing the rate in terms of a reactant, you always want to add a negative sign before it, okay? Now let's try to understand this. If you just look at the balanced reaction out here, you can see that for every two molecules of N2O5 that decompose, one molecule of oxygen is forming. So what we can say is that the rate of formation of oxygen is actually half the rate of formation of N2O5, okay? 
I'm going to say that once again, the rate of formation of oxygen is half that of N2O5 because for every two molecules of N2O5 that decompose, one molecule of oxygen is formed, okay? So the rate of formation of oxygen is equal to, should be half of this rate, the rate of decomposition of this, right? So that is equal to one half of, I'm just going to put the negative sign before the one half and I'm going to write delta N2O5 over delta T, okay? So, so that's, so th that's how they kind of relate, okay? So the rate of formation of oxygen is half of the rate of decomposition of N2O5 over delta T. Now let's try to relate the rate of, let's try to understand the rate of formation of NO2. So the rate of formation of NO2 is going to be equal to, now since NO2 is a product, we don't need a negative sign, we're going to write delta NO2 over delta T, okay? And now let's try to understand this rate or try to relate this rate to the rate of formation of oxygen. For every one molecule of oxygen that's formed, four molecules of NO2 are formed. So the rate of formation of oxygen is one-fourth that of the rate of formation of NO2. So therefore, we can write rate of formation of oxygen is one-fourth the rate of formation of NO2, okay? So now that we have all of these, the rates expressed and related to each other for this reaction, we can write in general the rate of the reaction. So we'll just write rate out here. So the rate of the reaction would can be expressed if we're choosing oxygen, it would be the change in the concentration of oxygen over the change in time. If we're choosing to measure it in terms of the decomposition of N2O5, it would be one half of the change in N2O5 over the change in time. And don't forget the negative sign because it's a reactant. And if we choose the rate of production of NO2, then it's going to be one fourth the change in NO2 over change in time. Now let's take a look at an example. So we have a reaction N2 gas plus 3H2O gives us 2NH3 and all of them are in gases. Uh, in the gas uh, phase. And if we have to find the, express the rate of the reaction with respect to the reactants and the products. So to do that, you just write rate is equal to following the same uh, analogy out here, okay? So N2 is a reactant, so it should be negative of the change in N2, don't forget the square brackets over the change in time which is equal to, if we express it in terms of hydrogen, that would be, now because there's three hydrogens out here, it'll be one over three, because remember the hydrogen production is three times the amount of N2 production, or you can think of it, the N2 production is a third that of hydrogen production. And since we're relating hydrogen to N2, we have to put one over three. So anytime you have a co coefficient, it becomes uh, you change it into a fraction where you put the coefficient as the denominator, okay? So 103, don't forget the negative sign because, let me write this a little differently. Create some space out there. There's the negative sign because it's a reactant. Change in the hydrogen concentration over change in time. And then that can also be expressed in terms of the product. There's a coefficient. We put that as the denominator in the fraction, change in the NH3 square brackets over change in time. And since that is a product, we leave it as a positive, we don't add the negative. All right, that kind of wraps it up for this video. I hope that made sense.